I'm Erica Jennings. I began my music career over 20 years ago at the age of 18 when we had our first Baltic hit with our hip hop version of George Gershwin's Summertime. I didn't get into music to be famous. I got into music to inspire and empower others. I knew this right from the start. And it was knowing why, knowing my why, that helped me then and ever after to navigate challenges and overcome obstacles in my life, including during COVID. The theme of this TEDx Youth series, The New Us, is the perfect space to share why I feel we are most grounded, certain and resilient under every kind of unexpected circumstance when we know why we do what we do. Knowing our why can really break things down and help us find the answers we need to move forward, to get back up, to keep growing and evolving, and especially when starting out in the world. I'd like to give you a few examples of how knowing my why helped me. Before our breakout hit record, we had been rejected over and over about two years prior. We knocked on every record label door, every radio station, and we only got TV interviews because we made our own merchandise that we could use as giveaways. And we always got the same story that, um, you know, we were mixing too many styles, too many languages, no one would understand us. No one in power liked our music. Now, we were told that if we wanted to make it, we would have to dilute our sound and we would have to cultivate an image and we would have to become more mainstream. If we had been in music to get famous solely, then we would have listened to that advice. But instead, we decided to nurture our craft and to get better and better at playing live and slowly we gathered a following and then when we got our chance our song was put on the summer compilation and after that everything changed overnight and suddenly those same radio stations and record labels all thought we were amazing and wanted a piece of us but it was knowing our why that had kept us on track and that was the first of many times when I was tested in that way. And knowing why I was doing what I was doing helped me make the right decisions at the time, even at 18. Fast forward to 2017. I was nominated for Best Female Artist at the Lithuanian Music Awards. However, a few days before the event, the nation was horrified by the news that a little boy of about four years old, Matukas, had been badly beaten by his mother and stepfather and was admitted to hospital for serious head injuries. The morning of the award show, he died. Now that night, if you were watching on TV, it would have looked as if no one cared because no one was acknowledging it, no one was recognizing it, no one was speaking about it. Award after award was given out and there was nothing said about it. However, at the arena, the feeling was very, very different. Um, the air was really heavy and somber. Everyone at our table and at other tables was definitely thinking about what had happened, but nobody said anything. And towards the end of the night, uh, my name was called out. So I went up to receive my award. And of course, I thanked everybody. Um, but I had a real rock in my stomach. And, you know, it was live TV. And I'm not someone who's ever liked speaking publicly. But I knew it was one of those moments that if I didn't say something as a human being and as a mother, I you know, would be going against everything I had ever stood for. So, I asked Matukas to forgive us as a society for letting him down, that it was our fault. And I said, if we wanted to be a functioning society, we had to see one another and hear one another and speak up for one another, and most of all, to act. And I was saying this, and I was shaking from head to toe, and my microphone was shaking, but. It really took every ounce of courage I had to say those words, but I had to do it. And the, the video went viral and, and it ignited a huge public uh, discussion about children's rights. And indirectly it helped to push forward some laws 
uh, on children's rights. And, um, you know, consequently, I got awarded, I got another award, <laughs> which was best, uh, was Woman of the Year. Um, for musical merit, but also, they told me, for having the courage to speak out. But the only reason I had the courage and the strength was because I knew my why. 2020 and COVID-19 hit us all very hard. The arts and artists in general suffered tremendously with little or no compensation. But I honestly believe that it's our teenagers who suffered the most. The teenage years are when we are forging those friendships and relationships that sometimes last for the rest of our lives. We're honing our social skills, discovering our passions, and all that was taken away overnight from the teens of the world. But in every crisis comes opportunity, and I know that you are all stronger in ways you may not yet understand because of this experience. And you should be proud of your resilience and your strength and ability to get back up and continue to be the best versions of yourselves because you are our future. March 2020 and all of my shows, festival dates, everything was canceled overnight. There was no reassurance that we would get any help and we didn't. Uh, we were simply left on ice and I was no longer a teenager. I had three kids, I had a mortgage, I had school fees, everything. And so it was definitely a big shock and a big knockback. Mm, I definitely felt lost for a while. And what helped me through those dark moments was two things, gratitude and knowing my why. Um, I was thankful that my family was healthy, that there was food in the fridge, that we had a beautiful home. Things were bad, but they could always be much worse. And gratitude relieves anxiety. And also, I had to re-examine during lockdown why I was doing what I was doing for the past 20 years. Did I still want to do that? Was this still my mission? And what I discovered was that yes, my mission was still very much to inspire and empower others. Thanks to COVID, I had to find other ways of doing it. So I thought to myself, well, I know a lot of inspiring and empowering people. Over 20 plus years, I've made some incredible friendships and connections. So I came up with Find Your Voice, a TV show where I would talk to successful people I found inspiring and learn about the challenges they faced and obstacles they overcame along the way, with the idea being to inspire and empower the viewer. So I gathered a team together and we made the TV pilot. I spoke to Belarus President elect Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, former Lithuanian President Dela Gryboskaita, and my friend and incredible documentarian Gedra Zhitskita. So we worked hard, we put it all together, and we handed it into national television. And a few weeks later, I found out it had been rejected. And I was really upset because I really believed in the show, the idea, you know, we had put our heart and soul into it and everything else. So I shed quite a few tears and I felt very sorry for myself for about a day. And then I got right back up and I got all my contacts and I sent the TV pilot out to every possible media outlet that might be able to take it. So, a few weeks later, I had interest from a couple of media outlets, but then came the offer from TV3, offering to buy eight episodes at once, and offering me more per episode than I would have made on national TV. Obviously, I was elated, and it has been an incredible feeling and journey to put myself in a new role and succeed at it. I just recently found out that the show Atras Sabo Balsa, Find Your Voice, is in the top 10 most watched on Go3 Lyatova for Lithuanian content. And I've had the honor of speaking to the current Prime Minister, Ingrid Rishimanita, um, current best opera singer in the world, Azmik Gregorian, current Lithuanian Speaker of Parliament, Victoria Tsmilita Nielsen, and many more. And it's been incredible. And they're all you know, amazing individuals. But the one thing they all have in common is that they all know why they do what they do. 
So as you're coming out of uh, the COVID cocoon and reacquainting yourself with the world and renewing those human connections um, and brushing off the cobwebs, know that as hard as it may seem, there are lessons to be learned in every situation, even from this pandemic. There is no success without failure. Everyone starts at the beginning and everyone makes mistakes. And there's no such thing as losing. There's winning and learning. And going forward and seeing the world through a new lens, through new eyes, as new and better versions of yourselves, believe me when I say that if you don't know what job or career you want or what you want to study, what you should try to discover is what you want to do for others and why. Knowing this can give you all the answers and help guide you towards your true path in life.